it is, I'm Elizabeth Lewis and I'm one of the um, board members for DCTT. And it is my pleasure to introduce our um, presenter today. And a little bit about is while having a mentor can be a significant difference in one's life, being one can also be a valuable experience that comes with responsibilities. This presentation focuses on the strategies towards transition through intentional mentoring. Learn how Kaiser University's MDC's mentorship impacts youth and disabilities who are at risk. And we are very fortunate to have with us today, Damian Hunt. So I'm gonna turn it over to you now. If you guys have questions throughout, you can put them in the chat box and um, I'll keep monitoring them for, for you, Damian. Somebody thank else. you so much. I greatly appreciate you guys. Uh, Elizabeth, amazing. Franklin, thank you for being behind the switchboard. Hello, everyone. My name is Damian Hunt. Hopefully everyone can hear me uh, today. Um, I am here on behalf of Kaiser University Multidisciplinary Center, where I am the regional school liaison for eight different uh, counties in the state of Florida. So I'm going to go ahead and start um, with the whole process. I'm going to share my screen here. Uh, and Elizabeth has already it, it actually already informed you guys. You are able to uh, just let us know where you're from and who you're with. And uh, we're going to go ahead and get this thing started. And because I don't need to see myself, I will be stopping my video. So also want to make sure that we are having the best connection that we can possibly have. So we want to go ahead and get started. Uh, first of all, good afternoon. Um, I just want to say this one particular thing, and it's going to sound abrupt, but I am not here to say something. I'm here because I have something to say. Every day there's a supply and a demand for quality mentors for young people all over the nation. Let's say all over the world. This is the reason I developed this service on behalf of Kaiser University Multidisciplinary Center. Because it's understood that today's youth are in desperate need to speak to people that they can confide into. I've been mentoring for Kaiser for the better man of about four to five years. And in that time, I've mentored uh, approximately over 250, almost 300 young people. And so this is very, very important to me. I take this very seriously and it's a passion of mine. Uh, I'm, I've also coached for 20 years where I've coached multiple NFL, um, Olympic, major league uh, athletes, even a platinum artist sing, uh, rapper. So I am here letting you know that your the mentoring ship and the work that you do is extremely important. So allow me to take you on a trip, a journey towards transition via the transportation of mentoring. The great thing is all of you guys have been bumped up to first class. There's no layovers and I hope you have your passport ready. So let's go. So this is what I would like all of you guys to do. I would like to have a little participation uh, from you guys. Think about this. Who helped you have that aha moment? That experience that gave you insight to your inner self. And if you can, if anybody remember that one person that you can remember dating back to your youth, type in the chat of that person, just the first name, we don't need the whole last name or, or what have you. I, I would lo love to make sure that we honor the, the person that actually helped you get to the level you are right now. So if you can just take a moment to just type in the name. I just need the first name, a nickname, a pet name, whatever you go, whatever they go by, um, and just put that in the chat because I want to make sure that we understand that the importance of a mentor, the importance of a person that you can confide into definitely needs to be celebrated. So I'm gonna give you a few seconds to do that. And while you're doing that, I'm gonna go ahead. Who was it? Who was it that person that you know that if it was not for them, you wouldn't be here where you are today? Who was that person that assisted you in getting the very best out of you? Who tapped into that untapped potential known as yourself, developing your purpose, not only your potential? That's the person that I wanna to talk to. That's the person that they left a little residue of themselves within you. You see, this is the person that was likely your mentor. This is the mentor and, and the mentee typically find each other. You find it organically. 
they may see something in the mentor that they, they desire and they strive to be, but they don't know how to get there. You as the mentor become their GPS toward the destination of the better self that they do not know is there just yet, but you're getting ready to show them. So then let's go and dive into this. What is mentoring? And this is me with a young man. Let me give you the backstory of this young man. This young man, we, we, call, we call him uh, London because that's where he was born. London was a young man who uh, went to a school in Palm Beach County, wanted to be a biochemist, but London actually read on a second grade reading level. He didn't like math. He really didn't even like science. As a matter of fact, he had chemistry. He didn't like chemistry class. He only liked the, the actual chemicals. So one of the things that I wanted to make sure that he understood is that I'm not there to bust his bubble and say what he can't do because far be it from me to tell anybody what they can and cannot do. But this is one of the things that I wanted him to understand is that we're gonna make sure if nothing else, we give you options. Because first of all, as some of us know, being a biochemist is the worst major in all of college. Actually, there's only maybe five positions that are open throughout the entire, within a 10 year span. People don't just up and leave those positions. They stay there until they can't stay there anymore. So as a mentor, as a mentor, your job is to make sure that you influence the young person through development. Your, your partner, your partnering uh, between two or more people and being a mentor in actuality is a helpful relationship that is based upon mutual trust, respect. And I'm gonna add another thing not only respect, but a healthy understanding that you're gonna be the person that may or may not have to tell them something that they may not like to hear, but they need to hear it. That is what a mentor does. As, a, as, as the mentor guides the individual towards the right direction and helps him to develop solutions toward personal and professional issues, that ultimately is the goal of the mentor. So let's go ahead and look at these, these two Juggernaut. There is a huge difference between a, being a mentor and a coach. Mentor, I would like to say, is like Bob the Builder. They take raw materials and able, and they're able to actually build a house legitimately from nuts and bolts, from plywood, from mortar, from bricks. That's what is a, that's what a mentor does. A coach, though, are very important. They're more so the ones that I say, like the property brother. I'm not saying that they can't build a house, but they're the ones that the house is already there. The foundation's already there. But what they can do is slap a coat of paint on it and make it look nice. They can organize things in the house to make things look better. They can actually make sure that the outside and the curb appeal looks great. So it will bring their property value up. That is what a coach does. But the mentor, you have to get your hands dirty. It's a grimy, grimy, grimy type of, 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 of position that you put in. So Mentors offers knowledge, expertise, and advice to those with less experience. A mentor has vested interest for the long-term goals of the mentee, whereas a coach focuses on the end result. In most cases, the coach's relationship is more limited and often short-term as far as building the rapport. See, a mentor is a builder, builds from the ground up. A coach is a renovator. Uses, inf uses the infrastructure that already exists. Both are great, but there is something about seeing some, something you design from the very thought, not just slapping a coat of paint, not just hanging up a picture, but actually seeing the concrete cure. That is what a mentor does. So why mentoring? You see, mentoring assures young people that there is someone who cares about them. Mentoring helps and lets the men mentee know that there are, they are not alone in dealing with day-to-day -day challenges. A mentor makes sure that the young people feel like they matter. A mentor promotes personal well-being. A mentor spreads the culture of positivity. A mentor provides a vehicle of care and inspiration to build character. These are all the characteristics of a mentor. So mentoring Research confirms that quality mentoring relationships have powerful positive effects on a young person's life. 
and it gives them a variety and help in personal situations, academic situations, and professional development. This is why mentoring. Also, the reason why mentoring is so important and why mentoring is needed for all of our organizations, for all of our youth, is because what we're trying to do is make sure that we raise academic achievement. We're trying to make sure that we promote the, the personal and positivity of that young person. We want to be able to make sure that we, we actually develop a culture within our schools, within the academics, within our organizations that we deal with on a daily basis. And we want to make sure that we increase the promise, the, the actual promises and the purpose of the, young, of the young person that may be within the classroom, that may be within the after school care program. Whatever it is, that is why mentoring is such a huge component of development for our young people. So it lets us ask us the age old question, who can be a mentor? I'm glad you asked that question. Thank you for asking. Everything we go through, good or what we perceive as bad, work together for our benefit. But this is based on the perception of the scenario that the person is going through. This is the characteristic of a mentor. You help the mentee understand this very important skill we call problem solving. We call making sure that they transition from where they are to being an upstanding young citizen in our society. That's what a mentor does. You pour yourself into that young person. It's not only about making sure that you see yourself in that young person, it's making sure that you see the promise that that young, that young person has, not just potential, the purpose. I typically do not like uh, reading verbatim from the slides, but I wanna make sure that I say this correctly. When veterans and novices, mentees, work together in a nurturing relationship, each gets something of real value from, from the other. Veterans gain energy. Novices gain inspiration. Isolation fades. Connection flourishes. And pain turns into wisdom, a joyful wisdom, that makes the, the difficulties in our work endurable and keeps both veterans and novices come back for more. And this is from the book uh, by David Shoemaker, A Tale of Two Children. And I cannot express to you how true this is. For those of you that, that may have called them, call yourselves a mentor or those that, that you actually call a uh, mentor yourself, you know this particular um, excerpt from this book is extremely true. So let me tell you this. It's not an exact science for a perfect mentor. As a matter of fact, no one's perfect. Anyone can be a mentor, but not everyone will be a mentor. Understand this completely, it is completely possible that a certain demographic will not suit the description of being the primary mentor for that young person. Parents, talking to you. Family members, I'm talking to you. And parents, I want their neighbors to be the kid's mentor. They may not fit the bill. The mentor-mentee relationship is organic. It appears to grow out of nowhere but understand that the foundation is trust and respect. We all know that trust is not a fast forward development. It's a slow process. I like to compare it to a crock pot. And for those that are cooks, or maybe those that are not, maybe they're novices in cooking, we cannot expect food to taste the same out of a crock pot than we, than we do in a microwave. Completely two different things. You see, it is better when you have the product and it simmers, and it simmers all day, the greatness is displayed coming out of that crock pot. And through a mentor and a mentee relationship, that is exactly what this is. It is a crock pot, but the end result is delicious. The end result is magnificent. The end result is the best relationship you ever had. Mentoring takes work. It takes energy and the willingness to go above and beyond a person that needs you. This is just a few of the things that a mentor is. So who can be a mentor? It's not just about seeing yourself in a mentee. It's about discovering the purpose. 
you see, the quality mentoring is more than just pairing a mentor with a young person. It's not just because Timmy is black and I am black. It's not just because Sally is a girl and Elizabeth is a girl. It's because there's something that that young person needs and it's something that that mentor needs to empty out of themselves. It has nothing to do with gender, religion, culture. It has nothing to do with any of those things. Are you willing to be yourself and make sure that that young person is getting what they need? Because the truth of the matter is, who can be a mentor? You have to understand, I am a jovial person at nature. I'm also strict. I like to have fun, but I'm also making sure that my business is taken care of. The thing is, I am whatever that young person needs me to be. I am the truth teller when they don't want to hear it. But at the same time, I'm the biggest cheerleader when they need somebody in their corner. That is what a mentor is. So the truth of the matter is, when you ask if you can be a, a hero, absolutely you can. At the very beginning, for, the, for those of us that, that actually went through the event mobile, uh, mobile um, app, you'll see that uh, Freddie had a superhero S on his chest. And it, and, it, and, it, and it sort of got me to thinking that being a hero, being a mentor, is not a one size fit all. It can't just be, Damien, you're this person, you went through this, so you're gonna be, you're gonna actually be uh, attached to the hip with Billy. That's not how this works. You have to make sure that they're compatible. You have to make sure that some form of impact is the bottom line for that mentee. You have to understand in order for you to be that young person's hero, you're available all the time. Let me tell you a, a quick synopsis of how this could, this could actually have a negative effect on a young person because you're not available. Growing up when I was young, I grew up, I, I was very fortunate to have both of my parents, but my father worked two or three jobs. And so I would always see guys that did well and they, they had great things even while growing up. Into, into adulthood. And I would ask these guys, hey, would you be my mentor? And they meant well, they said, yes, they'll be my mentor. And when it's time for me to ask for questions, they were never around. I couldn't find them. I, I had so many questions. I wanted to know, you know, this one particular NFL player who was a good buddy of mine, hey, you know, you have seven businesses all going at the same time, why? What, 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 what did you see? What was going through your mind? And I didn't have that person to confide into, to teach me how to be a business owner. So all those things, I remembered all the things that I wanted to be and I needed in a mentor. And that's the main reason why I developed the mentoring service and program through Kaiser University is because I wanted to be the person that I needed when I was a young person. As a mentor, you have to be available. That is the number one rule. If you're not willing to be available, you're just a coach. That leads me to my, my next point. You also have to approach that you're going to be different. And you have to embrace the differences that both of you have. You have to build that confidence for that young person and also within yourself. Understand your superpower within the positivity. Now, this is the part where I'm getting ready to go ahead and blow some of your minds because this means that you have to investigate. This means that it's going to take some time. This means that your, your, your mentee is, becomes a bank account. If nothing goes in, nothing comes out. So that means you have to invest and pour out resources, sources into this young person so they can be the best them they've ever, they've ever seen. Great mentors realize that they're playing a long game. It's going to go into overtime. And as a result, you have to be patient. You have to understand that you're guiding them through a very difficult path in their life, especially for those that have to deal with teenagers in today's society. They don't expect immediate gains. 
and they don't give up easily. A mentor, most importantly, takes care, takes care and maintain the growing professional relationship they have. Understanding also, they have to build those boundaries. Again, as a mentor, you're not there. You're not there to be a, a, a counselor if that's not your background. You're not there to be a mom or dad. You're not there to be a, a, an uncle or, or, or a big brother in some cases. Sometimes, as I tell all, of, all the young people that I've mentored, I am an ear. I am five foot 10, 250 pounds, and I am a giant ear. I want to be there to let you know it's going to be all right. Let's do this together. I'm, I, want to, I want you to understand how we're going to do this. And we do this by building rapport because you have to help this, the mentor be the best that they can be. The adage of what you don't know won't harm you is one of, the, is one of those adages that needs to be dispelled. Directly what you don't know may not, may not harm you, but indirectly, it is a false comment. This is where being a mentor comes into play. The mentor pushes the envelope of developing and building relationship with the mentee outside of an IEP and the academic rigor. And as we heard from um, one of our keynote speakers that an IEP is extremely important. And all of us know that an IEP is important but it is not the entire story about that youth. It is an ever, I'm sorry, forever changing document. It should never be assumed or understood as a document that is set in stone. A child's IEP does not define them. It gives an idea of what the type of student you have, but it doesn't say every single thing because there are certain things that an IEP may not tell you at the time that the IEP is taking place. Sudden changes happen often. If the student basic needs are being met, i.e. mom just lost their job, so there's no food, the water turns off, the clothes aren't clean. That is a basic need that an IEP at the time may not tell you. Another point is that if the student, uh, it's the, the, the student support system isn't solid or is effective of some sort, that's a change that an IEP may not tell you at that time uh, or other types of hardships. Unfortunately, I've had to deal with multiple deaths when it comes to young people. And one of the things that I found out is this, all of them could have been avoided if certain things were in place. And so I'm telling you, you have to bridge the gap. Yes, you have to connect with that student on a mutual relationship level but it has to be full of purpose and it has to mean something to you as well as it means something to them. They're going to test you. That's what young people do. I'm a father of two kids, an eight-year-old son and a seven-year-old daughter who's going on 25. And, and, and a lot of you guys know exactly what I'm going through. So please uh, keep me in your thoughts and prayers. Uh, but my seven-year-old, she pushes that envelope. She wants, to, she wants you to know that there are certain things that she just doesn't want to do. And she's going to make sure that her presence is felt. And so now what I thought I had years to prepare for, I have to prepare for those, those particular conversations now. They're going to push you. But are you going to collapse? Or are you going to stand sturdy? Because once they find out that you're, you're there for the long haul, they're going to stay. And they're going to stay well. So how does mentoring help transition? Good, awesome question. I'm glad you guys asked that question again. Mentoring helps the mentee stay focused and stay on track. It also helps give them a, a certain set of skills as Liam Nielsen would say in Taken. Mentoring also models what works using real life or research experience. Mentoring also creates a vision and develops a game plan. Mentoring help keep, I'm sorry, helps, uh, helps think about where that mentee would like to go and how they're gonna get there. Yes, mentoring does help. And the truth of the matter is being said this, mentoring, we actually help KUMDC with mentoring because it supports the state performance plan indicators one and two. I have to make sure I have to say that, but it also increases graduation success rate. 
of the student with disability and provide resources so they can graduate. Now, we don't promise that a kid is going to graduate because they're, they, they deal with us. But we do say that if you give us an opportunity, if you give a mentor an opportunity to be an advocate for that young person, to be a sounding board for that young person, the chances are a lot greater than what you think. It gives them confidence, self-esteem, and it creates big goals for them. This is just a few rates that I would like to share, share with you guys. According to youth and mentoring volunteer of, of University of Central Florida, and you see it, 37% are less likely to skip school or skip class. 46% are less likely to start using drugs. 52% less likely to skip school altogether. And I would like to pause and say this. I'm also, uh, I've also been in education for uh, 13 years now, or going on 14 years. Quick story, a young man named Joe. Uh, he was one of uh, what we used to have as VE, varying exceptionality type young people. Um, and he had a rap shoot probably as long as my arm. And um, I got tired of literally writing referrals, attendance referrals. And so I, I decided to call his grandmother. And his grandmother um, didn't answer the phone. It was actually Joe that answered the phone. And uh, he said, hello. I said, hey, what's going on, Joe? How you doing? He's like, who's this? I said, uh, they used to call me coach. So I said, this is Coach Hunt. Hey, what's up, coach? I'm like, man, I haven't seen you in school. What's going on? His next words were something that changed my whole outlook and being a teacher and a mentor. He said in his words, and I quote, I didn't think anybody cared if I came to school or not. Can you imagine? This young man is 15, 16 years old. And him thinking that nobody cares about him. Ladies and gentlemen, I made sure that I let him know, well, I care. Get to here to school. Joe was in my class with a pencil, ready to work in 15 minutes. I'm not saying that Joe came because of me. I'm saying that Joe understood that I saw something in him and I'm not willing to give up on him. Now, I will say this, Joe had all Fs and one C, whereas he had all Fs. That C was from my class and I don't give grades, never did. He earned that C. I'm not saying that my, the rest of my colleagues didn't do a good job in making him feel wanted. I'm just saying that in my class, he got a C. You take from that what you want to, all I'm saying is that I made sure that the, the olive branch was extended. Going back to my presentation now. So now let's look at this when it comes to mentoring uh, and employment. According to uh, Fortune 500 company and Forbes, 71% of Fortune 500 companies have mentoring programs. So if it's good for a Fortune 500 company, how much more is it important for us within our school systems or in our organizations? 25% of those employees who enrolled in those mentoring programs have salary grade changes, increases. Also, mentees are five times more promoted. And 68% millennials stay with companies for five years or more. And that's major because the truth of the matter is there is an adage that mentees don't like to stick to anything for a long period of time. But if you put a mentor in place, they will. And 89% of mentees actually become mentors. And I guarantee, I, I dare I say, probably that number has increased because a lot of you guys are mentors and you had a great mentor yourself. So let's go into this. This is a little something that I like to say, a graduation needs to happen. And what do I mean by the graduation needs to happen? This is what I like to call you can to I can. You see, motivation, though it ex it's extremely important, motivation helps you when there's a problem and it lets you know that it discovers the potential of a person. Motivation increases commitment. Motivation increases positive, 
personal growth. Motivation increases personal and professional development. Motivation is an outward force that pushes a person to do a better job and to be a better person within themselves. That's what motivation is. So let's go ahead and take this into maybe yesterday and today's keynote speaker and Chris and uh, Delena. What they did, their stories, we all have heard the ability to motivate in their story. And, you know, but what comes next? You see, Chris and Delena, though they are similar in the same world that they're in, we got an idea, a glimpse of what they went through. We heard their story, but we saw and feel the impact of their success. See, the thing is, what Chris and Delena did with their words was motivate, but they also went through their life, through all the things that they've done, all the things that they've gone through, through their life, they also inspired. You see, when it comes to inspiration, inspiration is something that is poured on the inside and it says, you know what? Not only does somebody say that, hey, you can do it, you can do it. Inspiration says, I can do it, I can do it. And I truly believe as a football coach or should I say as a sports coach, Chris coming from the, coming from the realm of sports says, you know what? Coach, someone said that you can do it. But eventually Chris and, and Delena both said, I can do it. That is an important concept. So we need to graduate from you can to I can. That is what a mentor does. You push from the outside, but you pour on the inside because there are days that you're not gonna be there and they're gonna be able to say, guess what? I think I can do this. And that's what we're gonna do. And yes, we use various curriculums. Shout out to Check and Connect. I know I, I, I actually uh, attended their, their meeting yesterday. Check and Connect we use. Uh, the tough, uh, tough Kid Social Skills book. These are all things that we use. Overcoming Obstacle, by far one of my favorite, no disrespect to the other ones, but that is my go-to because it gives you so many different strategies, so many different practices, so many different exercises. And of course, representing my, my, my good buddy there, Franklin, Project 10. And for those of you who have not gotten into Project 10 and checked out all of the things that they're doing, their curriculums, the stand, standing up for me curriculum, the self-advocacy and self-determination, there are, are absolutely amazing. My favorite again is Overcoming Obstacles. If you guys need to check it out, it's completely free. You will absolutely love it. So now it's time for story time. This is my example of, of mentorship. Let's take a look at the multiple, the multiple award-winning film, The Help. In the movie, Viola Davis plays an African-American maid by the name of Abilene Clark in the South, Jackson, Mississippi, to be exact, during segregation times. So most of us are privy to the hardships and the difficulties during that time. There are many messages in this movie, but I wanted to let you know about the emotional roller coaster of one person, one message at the time, and you're gonna see true mentorship. Abilene Clark cleaned the houses, I'm sorry, Abilene Clark cleaned the house and made dinner for this very prominent, prominent family. But there was this one little girl named Mae Mobley, the little girl that Viola Davis is holding right now. The mother, Mrs. Mobley, was too busy being the talk of the town and the life of every seclusive party that would only allow the richest family around town and out of town to partake in. They would have the biggest soirees, but she couldn't be a mother to that child. This is where Abilene would pick up the slack. The part that spoke to me the most is the, that anytime the baby girl would cry because her mom did not have the time to be there for her, Abilene would say these words. And of course it was around the time where 
Abilene didn't have a bunch of education. So I said exactly verbatim what she says. She says, you is kind, you is smart, you is important. I know this is not the proper grammar, but I want you to understand the effect that this has on a young person hearing this. A young, impressionable young person. She would hear these words every time Abilene came around her. You see, mentorship is much like the help. You need to reinforce positivity. You need to encourage. You need to be motivated. But you also need to inspire. You need to love. You need to appreciate. You need to feel like you are a part of something bigger than yourself. So I like to show my references to let you know that everything that I've gone through it and said today, it is research-based. And uh, someone, uh, I believe, they will have a copy of, of this particular uh, presentation. But I want to also bring you to something. This is a little something that I came up with. This is my conclusion. You see, the truth of the matter is, if you have fallen on your way to the top, good. You are on your way. But if you have learned from watching others fall on your way to the top, congratulations, you're there. The truth of the matter is, young people can learn from our mistakes. They don't always have to fall. So with that being said, I would like to end with this. Life is a Ford. And if anybody has a Ford, you'll know exactly where I'm coming from. I love cars, but I want you to understand this. If you look at all the models that Ford has, you'll notice something. Ford is an excursion, it's an explore, it's an escape, it's an expedition. It's gonna require some focus, and it's, you're gonna to have to tempo yourself down some more. And what does that mean? That means that in all, we have to understand that this thing is a marathon, it's not a sprint. If we understand this, we know that we have to help one another as much as we can, especially during the crisis that we're going through right now. Mentoring can aid a person to cross the finish line into their purpose. Through KUNDC, these are the things that we deal with. This is how we try our best to talk to our young people. Along with my colleague, Carolyn, we talk about anger management, conflict resolution, motivation, self-motivation, transition, career and pre-employment pre type skills, and so much more. This is just the tip of the iceberg. So with that being said, I am going to stop. Um, and of course, anybody that wants to get more information, you're, you're more than welcome to um, get in contact with me. But I'm going to stop sharing right now and just see if there are any particular um, questions that anybody has. I want to make sure that I give enough time to do that. Uh, again, I'm so appreciative that you guys chose my presentation to be a part of, uh, and I'll open it up for any questions that anybody may have. Thank you. Oh, wow. Thank you guys for all the great uh, feedback. I greatly appreciate it. Thank you so much. Um, thank you. Thank you. Uh, I want to also make sure I say this. I want to say thank you to all of you because I understand that sometimes um, what you do is a thankless job at times. People say thank you, but sometimes it just seems like it's jargon. So I want to be the one to say absolutely from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much for being the best part of our, our society. Thank you so much for loving on a particular population of young people that are, that are often tossed to the side and forgotten. Um, you're, you're an amazing, amazing group of people. And I can only hope that what you do uh, reverberates through our society, through our nation. You're an amazing group of people. Thank you so much. Um, that's all I have. That's it. So I just see lots of great comments in the um, chat box, but Damien, thank you for presenting.
for the, for Thank our you. conference and we really appreciate your message and i see quite a few people are inspired so um i know that that kaiser is a great organization and you guys are easy to reach and work with um so you can definitely follow up and contact them for more information Absolutely. LinkedIn, look me up. It's H-U-N-T-E. The E is silent. My dad is from Barbados. So um, <laughs> anything that you guys would love. Um, oh, I see. I see. Uh, is that Noel? Uh, yes. Uh, it's absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing. So yes, yes. Uh, down, get, get, get those, get the, and, and, and please go to Project 10 as well. Go, please go, go get all of their resources. All of it. It's free. Okay, well, if there's nothing else, thank you for joining us. And the next session is at 3.30, I believe. So the next one's starting.